Democracy, according to Webster's Dictionary, is a form of government where the supreme power is vested in the people through a system of representation that usually involves free elections. In other words, a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. We're all taught this in primary school, but do we really believe it? Have I ever felt that the supreme power of my government was vested in me or my people? To be frank, no. But I do believe in the possibility of democracy. However, until we get rid of the systemic impediments to democracy that are deeply ingrained in American electoral politics, I doubt we'll ever see full participatory democracy. We can have a government of the people, for the people, and by the people, but first, we have to do the work. In 1965, President Lyndon Baines Johnson signed the Voting Rights Act specifically to address a major barrier to democracy, restricted access to the ballot. Before the 1965 Voting Rights Act, Black people and other minorities had to overcome barriers that were impossible to overcome by design. They were just constructed to keep certain people from exercising their right to vote for whomever they felt would best represent them. After the enactment of the 1965 Voting Rights Act, there was an immediate expansive shift in Black voter participation. In less than a year, a quarter of a million new Black voters registered to vote. This was a significant improvement, but it wasn't the panacea or magic wand that it was touted to be. In my public school, for example, the 1965 Voting Rights Act was taught as if it were manna from heaven, the key that brought democracy to Black people. Never was it mentioned that there was a backdoor maneuver that would help to maintain the old status quo for decades to come. What we were not taught was that the Voting Rights Act applied to federal elections, not state elections. And as we all know, states have their own elections and their own election laws. Fast forward a few decades, and today we find ourselves dealing with the ramifications of a Supreme Court decision that effectively struck down the Voting Rights Act, Shelby v. Holder. And we're, gonna, we're not going to really talk about Shel Shelby v. Holder right now, but what I do want to talk about was the 36-page the dissent that uh, Supreme Court Justice, the late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg wrote after the Shelby v. Holder decision. What Ruth Bader Ginsburg brought to my attention in reading that 36 page dissent was that there are a couple of different ways that people's uh, voting rights were impinged upon. And one of them is still quite active today. And that is at-large elections versus district elections. So at-large elections, you ask, what are they? So at-large elections are the opposite of district elections. If you're unfamiliar with the distinction and live in a large metropolitan area like Los Angeles or New York or Chicago, think of your city council. Most likely it is divided up by city council districts so that when you vote, you live within a particular city council district and you're only voting for the candidates that are running in that particular district as opposed to a at-large election where the entire city, all of the residents of the city, vote for the entire city council. So what Ruth Bader Ginsburg made clear is that at-large elections, so here's a, a quote from the 36-page uh, dissent that she wrote. She says, another is the adoption of a system of at-large voting. When she says another, she's talking about another way that creates discri racial discrimination in voting. Another is an adoption of a system of at-large voting in lieu of district by district voting in a city with a sizable black or minority population. By switching to at-large voting, the overall majority can control the election of each city council member, effectively eliminating the potency of the minority's votes. Fortunately, in the state of California, the legislators addressed this second generation barrier to minority voting when they enacted the California Voting Rights Act of 2001. The California Voting Rights Act is a state law that makes it easier for minority groups in California to prove that their votes are being diluted in at-large elections by expanding upon the Federal Civil Rights Act of 1965. 
The California Voting Rights Act is settled law and has been in place for more than 20 years. But guess what? There's still a lot of cities in California that still conduct at-large elections as opposed to district by district elections. For example, the city of Lomita, California, a small bedroom community of South Los Angeles, the population of Lomita has, um, as of the 2020 census, is approximately 37% white and 63% people of color. But historically, that city has never conducted district elections. That is until this year. So if you go to the uh, city hall in Lomita and you look at a picture, and I'm gonna put this picture up, you'll notice that since the city was uh, founded, there has not been a, a noticeable uh, presence of people of color on the city council. The California Voting Rights Act, which was enacted in 2001, requires that there be a district by district race, but it's not self-enforcing. And so in January of 2022, the city of Lomita, Lomita received a demand letter challenging their at-large election system and asserting that it violated the California Voting Rights Act. As a result of receiving that letter on May, in May of 2023, the city of Lomita adopted an ordinance to implement a bi-district election system and will be voting by district in November of 2024. Congratulations, Lomita. You've just stepped into uh, the, the 21st century. Thank you.